I will tell you of a reality that has been hidden from us for centuries, the secret behind money and banking, and the American dollar. The dollar empire, or in other words, the dollar reality. The rebellion of the American people against England continued until 1776. During this rebellion, British bankers were financing the rebels, and in return, they demanded the right to print American money, and they were successful. The American founding fathers gave British bankers the right to print dollars. In 1776, America was freed from the British king. However, it did not realize until 1865 that it was caught up in a bigger disaster. Abraham Lincoln, who ended the American Civil War in 1865, took back the right to print dollars from the bankers on the grounds of war expenses. The American state was able to print dollars for the first time during the reign of President Lincoln, but it did not last long. Abraham Lincoln was assassinated. When he died, printing American dollars returned to the old order. Bankers continued to print dollars. The bankers were in trouble with the presidents who came after them. Finally, a middle ground was found. In 1913, a bank called Fed was established. The right to print the American dollar was given to the Fed, but all of the Fed partners were banker families. The American state did not even have a share in this bank. The bankers divided America into 12 regions and divided it into governors on behalf of the regions. They entered the Fed administration as bankers. Each of them functioned as a central bank branch in their own region. On the surface, the American state appointed the president of the Fed, but in reality, the bankers appointed whoever they wanted. The Fed printed the American dollars and also served them as the central bank. After the bankers had bloodshed Europe twice in both world wars, in 1944, with the Bretton Woods Monetary Agreement, the dollar was accepted as the world currency. With this agreement, it was assumed that there were 0.88 grams of gold for one dollar. They defined their money according to the dollar. Thus, the monetary system linked to foreign currency emerged and everyone was happy. Because gold was assumed in exchange for dollars and the monetary system indirectly linked to gold continued. In 1960, President John F. Kennedy opposed the American Treasury to borrow dollars from the bankers. With the bill No. 1110, the bankers had the right to print money. He demanded that it be handed over to the state. But he was assassinated. The people loved the Kennedys. Instead of John F. Kennedy, R. Kennedy was being prepared to replace him. But he was also assassinated. The first job of Vice President Johnson, who replaced the Kennedys, was to remove law number 1110 from the agenda. The bankers continued to print dollars. The bankers used America to indebt the state. They brought them into war. The Korean War and the Vietnam War were increasing the expenses of the American state. Uncle Sam was financing the war by borrowing from bankers. Americans were dying and killing, but they didn't even know why they were involved in these conflicts. In 1965, the famous head of state of France, General de Gaulle, realized that more dollars were being printed than the gold available in the U.S. He started to demand gold from America in exchange for the dollars he had. The debate continued until 1972, when President Nixon abolished the gold equivalent of the dollar and the dollar turned into unpaid paper money. In order to silence France, they invented a currency valid between the states called Special Drawing Right, SDR. This money consisted of the US dollar, mark, the yen, sterling, and the French franc at certain rates. In 2002, the franc and mark in the Special Drawing Right were replaced by the euro. In 2016, the Chinese currency was added to the Special Drawing Rights. Today, Special Drawing Rights constitute 4% of international reserves. The dollar continues to be the sovereign currency. Since 1973, the dollar tower has been used by bankers as unrequited money. It is printed and serves as the world currency. Americans and citizens of other countries still think that the dollar is the money of the American states. Bankers, consisting of 13 families and accounting to not more than a thousand people, rule the world with the dollars they print for free, and it is called the dollar empire.